Good afternoon. As you know, uh, President Clinton uh, signed within the last uh, hour or so the uh, Presidential uh, Select Reserve call-up, which gives Secretary Cohen the authority to call up as many as uh, 33,100 reservists to support Operation Allied Force. Uh, we'll give you a briefing on this later on, but the this will be a sequential call-up, and the first uh, group is likely to be about 2,000 people, and then we'll add as we make further deployments of uh, aircraft, primarily uh, to the theater in line with uh, General Clark's request for more aircraft so he can move to uh, more robust 24-hour day operations um, and to hit a broader range of targets. Before uh, getting to that part of the briefing, uh, General Wald will give you a, a, a quick operations update, and then uh, Major General Kudlatz, who's the uh, U.S. Air Force Deputy Chief of Staff for Air and Space Operations, will come and brief you on the on the reserve call-up. And there'll be more information later from the Air Force for those of you who want to zero in on very specific uh, detail. Uh, as you also know. Today, the uh, International Committee for the Red Cross representatives did meet with the three POWs in Yugoslavia. Uh, it was about a 40 to 45 minute meeting. Uh, it was handled uh, in strict compliance with the terms of the Geneva Convention in that there were no uh, Serb or Yugoslav handlers there. They were able to meet alone with the uh, POWs. They uh, uh, brought a doctor with them who was able to uh, give the POWs a brief checkup, and they also were able to take messages from the POWs back to their families. The, uh, the ICRC has not commented on, on the uh, results of the uh, medical checkup, and obviously the messages uh, uh, that they're taking back are, are private at the discretion of the families. Uh, we're also encouraged by the fact that we're encouraged by the fact that this happened, and also encouraged by the fact that the ICRC says that they expect to have uh, future meetings with the three POWs. Also today, the ICRC had its third meeting with the uh, Yugoslav soldier who was being held by Allied forces in Germany. Um, just two other things. Uh, you've all read the comments of the Deputy uh, uh, Prime Minister of Yugoslavia, Duke Draskovic. One of the things he said was that uh, there were horrible scenes of refugees in Albania, Macedonia, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and Montenegro that were not making their way to the uh, Yugoslav people on state television. Despite those horrible scenes, um, we continue to receive reports of uh, atrocities in Kosovo. Um, we've received some unconfirmed reports that as many as uh, 70 refugees were executed over the last five days in a town called Kolic, which is northeast of Pristina. Um, we will be obviously investigating these reports. Um, we and other countries, uh, human rights investigators, We'll be investigating these reports to see if there's uh, information that should be passed on to the uh, International uh, uh, War, Crime, War Crimes Tribunal. Uh, but uh, I stress these are unconfirmed reports, and we have to uh, have to investigate them further. Finally, on a uh, happier note, um, I'd like to uh, uh, point out that uh, President uh, Clinton has uh, announced that Lieutenant General. Um, uh, John Keane uh, will be uh, nominated to become a general and be promoted uh, to the uh, job of uh, Deputy uh, Chief of Staff of the Army. So uh, Lieutenant General John Keane, who's currently um, the, uh, Deputy, the uh, Deputy Commander in Chief of the U.S. Atlantic Command in Norfolk, Virginia. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, General Wald. Good afternoon. Uh, the weather today is uh, right now not too good in Kosovo, but over the next few days it looks like it'll start clearing. And the trend is usually 25 to 30 percent bad weather during the month. We've had about our quota for the month. We hope that'll start clearing up. And uh, as I said, they've flown over the last 24 hours and continue to fly today. 
over the last 24 hours, uh, hit about uh, 11 or so targets, as you can see, in the last 24 hours of this type of target. Command and control, sustainment, air defense, fielded forces, mobility in these particular areas, a couple of bridges up in this area. Uh, just to rehash over the last uh, 34 days or so, in the command and control, hit nine national command authority targets and 28 radio relay sites, COM, RAD RELs. These are command and control, C2. Uh, you've seen some of the towers that we've shown, one of the towers that was taken out uh, last night, or the night before last, I should say, and we'll show some imagery of that. Integrated air defense, we continue to hammer away at that, uh, both SAMs, airfields, an Army airfield here that has HIP helicopters that were used against the ground forces or the refugees in Kosovo, SAM storage, early warning throughout the area, some in Montenegro, but that's for self-defense and hit a couple of radars in Montenegro last night. Continue to hit their garrison forces as well as their fielded Serb and MUF police, police forces. A uh, total of uh, 34 total targets, but those are garrison forces primarily. And then in the field itself, there have been some targets that wouldn't be considered just individual targets that were either ve vehicles, trucks, APCs, etc. And there were, uh, have been dozens of those attacked as well. Uh, the infrastructure and sustainment, once again, 100% of the refineries are down, 70% of their production capability overall, and then strategic storage, bridges, ammo production, industry, and ammo storage throughout Kosovo and the Fry itself. On the humanitarian side, 57 contributing nations, over 6,400 short tons of food, shelter, bedding, etc., continues to flow through. 15 different nations have now taken on refugees in their country. Uh, in Ancona at the Intermediate stage, Staging Base, there are now over 2,700 tents and 4,000 blankets ready to move forward. Uh, moved in another 61,000 blankets into the Fire Rom. Uh, once again, uh, shelter is of the essence right now. They're continuing to move that forward. Uh, out of these 2,700 tents, uh, a couple thousand of those will actually be sent forward to build the camp that will be in Albania. That will start up shortly. The way ahead, we plan to send uh, another additional, besides the 2,000 tents, uh, 526 via Ancona and another 1,000 blankets into Kukas that will be in the forward uh, refugee camp and will continue to send food in. Uh, the U.S. has been asked to have HDRs uh, type food available. Uh, the European nations are supplying a large quantity of uh, uh, food that would be able to be cooked type food that's uh, not necessarily in humanitarian daily rations type. They have plenty of uh, flour and, and food of that nature, and they're dependent on us to have the, the more of the uh, 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 emergency type foods, HDRs and MREs. <clears throat> For sustained hope, which is our portion of the uh, humanitarian effort, uh, there are several areas that have sustained hope uh, personnel operating out of there. The headquarters is in Einzielerhof, Germany, about 189 folks there. That's where the headquarters for Brigadier or Major General Hinton is, who is the CJTF Shining Hope Commander. We have a TALSI at uh, Falcon Air Airfield, which is at Ancona, one of the forward staging bases. The Incheon is still in the Adriatic with their MH-53s, about 661 folks there. There are five in the Firearm Skopje that are handling some of the uh, coordination with uh, Allied Harbor, which will be the NATO uh, mission when that stands up. That's uh, planned for about 7,600 folks. And of the total U.S. personnel, 1581 will chop to the NATO mission Allied Harbor when that uh, stands up. Still have some in Greece and then uh, about 628 folks in, in Tirana itself, made up of uh, various type of uh, personnel for air traffic control, uh, air base squadron, civil engineering, medical security, etc., and a Red Horse team that will be closing in Tirana over the next few days, and they will be building four large ramps for aircraft holding and a road from the main gate to the air, uh, airport general. <clears throat> Just to show you a little bit, the only imagery I want to show you today is one picture. You've seen this on TV. This is the uh, Socialist Party headquarters with the what used to be an antenna on top that was part of their command and control. This picture is taken off a of Serbian internet, so they at least have some way of finding out a little bit in their own country what's happening. Some imagery.
First is a Belgrade radio relay, once again part of the command and control of F-117, laser guided bomb yesterday. You can see the actual tower here, large radio relay tower. The ability to communicate with fielded forces throughout Fry and Kosovo. The aircraft will drop the bomb from almost directly above and the tower starts to go and we're not sure if it stayed up or not, but it looks like it was at least shut down. Dakovica Army Barracks, F-16 with a laser guided bomb. This is in western Kosovo. Continue to take down their ability to sustain the fielded forces. There's an actual large tower here that's for communication of that force that we'll go after. You can see it coming into view here. They'll hit at the base of the tower and uh, that shut down the transmissions on that. The tower it looked like it stayed standing. Novi Pazar Army Barracks once again in Kosovo, northern uh, Kosovo. F-16 uh, out of Aviano with a laser guided bomb. <clears throat> you can see that he was moving around. He's probably maybe getting shot at for all I know. There's actually his wingman has dropped over here. He'll take out this building here. And in the last uh, few seconds actually tracks in the bomb. He has a direct hit. Uh, railroad bridge over the Danube River with an F-117 a few days ago. This bridge subsequently has been dropped totally into the river. This particular hit did not take out the bridge. You can see the black on there are lights on the bridge. Black shows hot in this film. This bridge was struck several times before it was finally dropped and now the whole span is fully into the river except for just a center pier in the middle of that bridge. It's been shut down. That was the last bridge across the Danube up north. Rudnik Mup Police Station, uh, paramilitary forces fielded in Kosovo. F-15E with the laser guided 2,000 pound bomb underneath the cursor. Large explosion, some secondaries, and that was uh, rendered destroyed. Have any questions today? No, that's it. I'm well, just kidding. Um, <laughs> General Norman was quoted as saying that the Apaches were not going to cross the Albanian border into um, Kosovo. Do you have any comments on that? Uh, I haven't read the report about that, but the Apaches at some time in the future will be employing, and they certainly plan to employ just like the rest of the aircraft that are deployed at Allied Force. Can I read the quote? Maybe this will illuminate it. The only thing which I can assure you, they have no combat mission which would allow them to cross the Albanian border, the general said. Is there some new mission here that we don't know about? Uh, I think that you'd have to go back to General Nauman. He may have been misquoted because these uh, aircraft are certainly intended to be used just like the rest of the aircraft. Help me out with, with petroleum, petroleum products and crude. Uh, both refineries, and the only refining capacity is down. That's correct. Is, is, that, is that correct? Uh, they are not receiving crude uh, from their fields in the north and using it in any, they have no cap capacity for refining crude now. That's correct. Okay. Now, and so far as a supply link of refined products from the bar, from the port of bar, the uh, supply line is rail. Uh, is that supply line still open to Milosevic to use? Can he get products? If he gets products to bar, can he get them up into Yugoslavia, or is that, uh, has that been taken out? The rail line is open, except there isn't a rail bridge to get across. So once he gets to the border, he would have to go across via truck. If he wants to take the chance of doing that, that's up to him. So at the border, then he has, he, has, he has to transfer it to another means of vehicle of some other sort, which would probably be a truck. If he wants to do that, he can do it at his own risk. General, is there any preliminary uh, conclusion about what the likely cause might have been for the crash of the Apache helicopter yesterday? And will the crash in any way affect the timetable for the deployment of those uh, Apaches? On the last one, from what I understand, it shouldn't affect that whatsoever. And on the first part, they're doing an investigation, so I could only speculate, and I wouldn't even talk about that until the investigation's over. You can rule out, but just to clarify, you can rule, I would rule out, out that it was not shot down. Not hostile it was not hostile fire. Can you clear up something on uh, oil shipments going into Montenegro? The, the information available here last week was that uh, about seven ships had gone into uh, uh, Bar since the beginning of the. Uh, <clears throat> the bombing. But uh, General Clark uh, said uh, today in his briefing 
that it used to be two or three ships a day, which of course would add up to more than uh, seven since the start of the bombing. But now we're seeing ten ships a day in port, almost exclusively tankers offloading 24 hours a day. Has there been some sudden rush of tankers? And while NATO sits there trying to figure out how it's going to do this uh, maritime exclusion or whatever it's going to be called, is it the case that uh, Yugoslav fuel stocks are actually going up? Quite the opposite. Um, on one day, uh, there may have been as many as 10 ships unloading in the harbor. Uh, we believe that uh, in the last month there have been uh, maybe about 10 ships in there. We think in the last month they brought in approximately one-third of the oil products that um, they brought in in January, for instance. So uh, the shipments are down uh, quite dramatically. Uh, the one day in which we saw as many as 10 ships there, uh, they, we don't believe they were all oil tankers. Um, so there may be some, uh, there may be some confusion on this, but the, the, the fact of the matter is that the shipments have already been cut dramatically, and the shipments should be cut to nothing uh, after the EU embargo goes in, and that will be, of course, reinforced by the NATO visit and search regime. And then to address your question, Bill, um, there already we have cut the rail line out of Montenegro into Serbia. Uh, that was done several weeks ago, and there will be more aggressive targeting of supplies as they move. As you probably noticed today at General Clark's briefing, he did show an attack against a fuel truck, and that's an example of the type of attacks that will take place with more regularity. Yes? How long would it take to essentially drain Milosevic dry of, of fuel supplies? I mean, how, how many days, weeks? Well, I think that's uh, – uh, I'm not sure we know exactly. Um, we think that uh, the military oil supplies may be down to about um, 10 percent of what they were, uh, the military petroleum supplies, 10 percent – down to 10 percent of what they were before the conflict began. And we are seeing some signs uh, that um, units are having trouble getting the fuel they need. They're certainly on very reduced rations. Um, we don't know exactly um, where uh, all the storage facilities are, but we think we're hitting them quite, uh, quite aggressively. And uh, as General Wald pointed out, we've already shut down the refining capacity, so it's just a matter of time. We've, he can't refine anymore. He's not going to be able to get any more fuel by ship, and we're aggressively taking out the supplies, so they're diminishing quickly. Yes, Neil. You were saying you wouldn't get any more supplies due to the EU uh, embargo and then the, the visit and, and search. Um, obviously, some important suppliers are not members of the European Union, Russia, and Libya among them. Um, how would their shipments be stopped? Well, um, as you know, uh, the NAC is working out the uh, arrangements now, including the rules of engagement. My uh, sense is that it will probably come out to be something like Operation Sharp Guard, which I believe was run by NATO to keep uh, fuel and other supplies from going in, not fuel, but military supplies from going into Bosnia. That um, allowed uh, boarding, and um, it allowed ships to be turned away. Uh, certainly, the uh, proposals that have been uh, forwarded by uh, General Clark uh, to the military committee or by the military committee to the NAC uh, do allow – do uh, allow as one of the options for a use of force. Uh, Ken, generally, where is the oil coming from that's going into Bar? And specifically, were any of these ships that you noted Russian ships? As, uh, um, I'm not. Uh, the list I've seen didn't have Russian ships on it. It had, uh, you know, ships are registered in a lot of countries, Panama, places like that, and they're of various registry. Yes. And follow up on that. When you say use of force, what's the U.S. current position on that? Is it use of force to board? Use of force to turn away? Could you just expand? Well, first uh, of all, um, use of force generally is not necessary in situations like this, that um, the vast majority of ships don't challenge embargoes or they don't challenge visit and search regimes. That was certainly true with Sharp Guard. Um, the times when they do challenge them, uh, they uh, can be boarded. And I think in Sharp Guard, there are only two cases where force was used to, uh, to board ships, and those ships did not get through to deliver their cargoes if it was contraband 
cargo. The issue here is not to prevent all ships from going into Bar or, or Coto Bay, the two Montenegro ports. The issue is to prevent ships carrying contraband material, specifically oil, from getting in. So you would then, this, this now is you will board in a, any ship that you believe is in, carrying contraband. That's the policy? I didn't say that was the policy. What I told you was before, and as you know, NATO is currently um, looking at proposals for rules of engagement and other arrangements for making this work. The options that have been proposed by General Clark do, do involve the use of force. NATO will make a decision on this. Okay, follow up on the Apache. Uh, was there any special reasons that the Apaches already deployed in uh, Tuzla and other places in Bosnia weren't just sent into this? Uh, this area because of the urgency of getting there in a hurry? I mean, why the stress and strain taken all the way from Germany? Uh, General Clark made that decision. He, as the uh, commander in chief, he controls the Apaches in uh, Bosnia as well as the Apaches uh, throughout Europe. And was there he, any diplomatic objection to sending the nearby Apaches in there, or is it I, I, I don't know. This was a. I mean, we, we, are, we do have a very uh, robust and important mission in Bosnia, and he may not have wanted to uh, pull it down to do this. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, a refugee question. There were radio reports today that some Al ethnic Albanian refugees may be going to Fort Dix, New Jersey. Uh, can you shed any well, light on that? Well, they're not going. Uh, yes, they're, uh, they uh, may well process through Fort Dix, New Jersey to uh, join family members in the United States. I don't think they'll be living at Fort Dix. My understanding is the arrangement is that's the processing point, and there may be some uh, time that they would spend there as they get ready to uh, go out and meet family members. This is a group of refugees coming here specifically to uh, to unify with family members in the United States. I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. This is much more an INS thing than a Pentagon thing. Yes. The uh, um, helicopter airfields that have been targeted, do they contain helicopters? Is there evidence that they are able to disperse? helicopters and, and base them elsewhere, hide them under trees, things like that, and can you can you provide any information about what uh, his remaining order of battle is with uh, with regard to attack helicopters? Uh, I don't know the remaining order of battle for helicopters, but <clears throat> the one they hit in, uh, the one target I did show you, had helicopters at the field that were destroyed, and they can, you know uh, I mean? uh, I'm not sure of the number, It's in, I think it was in uh, half a dozen, I think was the number. Let me take um, one or two more questions for General Wald and then pass it. Uh, on yeah. oil. Oil. Yeah. Let's do oil afterwards. Let's get to reserves, and we can do oil after reserves. I'll take plenty of questions. Can I just ask an IDP question, please? Um, do you have any update on the status of the IDPs in terms of are you still seeing them living in the hills? Are you seeing them come back to villages at all? Uh, where are these people nowadays? Uh, there's a combination. Many of them are still in the hills. They're in valley areas that have water and some of the areas that would have water. Some have, we've heard, moved back into villages. We're not sure why that is, if they've been allowed to do that. We understand they're maybe being escorted back in, not necessarily of their will. Uh, so the status of the IDPs is in flux. But the reports we're getting out is they're not being treated necessarily very nicely most of the time, and the ones in the hills are a little short of food, but not water. General, can I ask you if there's anything you can pass on about what the defectors from the uh, Yugoslav army are saying? We keep hearing every day that their defectors are defectors, but are they saying that they're running short of food, that, that uh, they, they, they can't live through the bombing? I mean, What's the message you're getting out of the defectors? Uh, I haven't heard any interviews from the defectors that have been conducted by the U.S. personnel or NATO personnel. There are anecdotal rumors that, uh, first of all, there are defectors, and there are various ways of finding that out. But the, they are uh, melding some of them into the populace, and some of them are melding into surrounding uh, the well, frontline states. It doesn't necessarily mean they defect to, uh, to uh, allied forces. They can right. defect from the mil desert from the military. We don't have our hands on any of them at this point, sir. No, we do not. But the, going back to your original question, George, the fact of the matter is there are several sources of information that tell us that the morale has decreased noticeably that they are hurting for food in some places, that their fuel is being rationed. Uh, one of the questions earlier is how much fuel do they have to maintain operations? Uh, the fact of the matter is they aren't operating their vehicles very much, so they don't need a lot of fuel right now. If they needed to start maneuvering a lot, they would be hurting for fuel. Just anecdotally, are there, are, are there any of the defectors uh, 
non-commissioned officers or officers, or are they privates? Because I, Desert Storm, you know, the, the NCOs bugged out, and then the uh, privates were stuck in the, in, in the bunkers. Is there any pattern to rank defection? The only thing I've heard through anecdotal is that not they aren't necessarily officers. They're lower enlisted rank, but it, we're not sure of that either. General, why isn't more gear being drawn out of the pre-positioned stocks in Italy instead of being flowing down like the tanks being flowing down from Germany? Uh, well, I don't know of any real tanks that are pre-positioned in Italy, per se. They have the Southern European Task Force that's there. That's the light uh, organization. But uh, there, I don't believe there's any tanks pre-positioned in Italy, per se. What brigade set? Pre that, if there are, I'm not sure. And I think they're there for another purpose. But uh, there is, there are other missions in the area. And by the way, these organizations like Task Force Hawk, when they come, uh, they're pretty much married up to another unit for training and other purposes, and they've actually trained together in the field, so they'd come with who they trained with. Let's, uh, thank you very thank much. You. Let's turn it over to General Kudlatz. Also, we have here uh, Charlie Cragen, who's the uh, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Reserve Affairs, who can answer questions as well. Good afternoon. As uh, Mr. Bacon mentioned, I'm here to uh, talk about how the presidential selected reserve call-up affects the Air Force. The Air Force effort in operations over and around Yugoslavia has been a total force effort, which is business as usual for us uh, in everything we do in the Air Force. More than 1,500 guardsmen and reservists currently are participating in those operations on a volunteer basis. And for worldwide Air Force operations, more than 6,000 guardsmen and reservists are serving side by side with their active duty counterparts on a volunteer basis. However, to support the request from the sink for more forces, we must go beyond the limits of volunteerism in call up selected reserve forces. The PSRC gives us the authority to call up reserves as needed to meet our operational commitments. Today, we are calling up approximately 2,100 guardsmen and reservists as the first increment of the PSRC. These 2,100 men and women will meet our immediate need to deploy additional air refueling aircraft, crews, support people, and associated equipment. These forces are needed to increase the tempo of air operations, allow us to keep pl planes on station for longer periods of time, and increase the number of planes participating in operations over Yugoslavia and Kosovo. The Guard and Reserve units that will be tasked to support this requirement are listed on the DOD press release provided for you at the back of the room. As I said before, this call-up responds to our immediate need for tanker support. It is just the first increment of the larger commitment that is required to support Operations Allied Force and sustain hope. As we continue to increase the level of effort, we'll draw from the total force as needed to meet those requirements. In addition to authorizing PSRC, the President also reaffirmed our authority to implement stop-loss measures to ensure we retain the people necessary to meet our requirements. We intend to implement stop-loss for critical skills across the total Air Force, active duty, guard, and reserves. And this will preserve those skills needed to perform the mission. We are currently analyzing our immediate and long-term requirements. Upon completion of that analysis, we will take a selective approach to implementing stop loss that will ensure we retain the critical skills needed across the total force. PSRC and stop loss are serious actions that further show our commitment to NATO. We recognize the sacrifices that all our airmen their families must make to support these efforts, and we are deeply appreciative of their service and commitment. We also appreciate the outstanding support provided by employers when guardsmen and reservists are called to serve their country during a crisis. This time I'll take a couple of questions, or if you would prefer, I will have the uh, uh, Chief of the uh, Air Force Reserve, uh, General Sherrod, Chief of the Air Force uh, Guard, uh, Major General Weaver, and uh, General Parmelo from Air Force Personnel, and we'll all be together at 3.30 in uh, room 4D922. And we can answer a lot of your specific questions at that time. General, uh, how many reservists and guardsmen do you anticipate having to call up through this? I mean, you've said 2,100 to begin with, but what do you expect 
2100 is just the first increment, as I said. Uh, we don't know what we're going to expect. The uh, ceiling for the Air Force is 25,000, but that's just a ceiling. Uh, as the uh, requirements uh, become known from the theater, from uh, General Clark, then we'll uh, incrementally uh, call up the Guard and Reserves as we need to. How about a number for the stop loss action? How many would be affected? Stop loss, I don't have a number. We can get that for you at 330. Uh, how about uh, if, you, if you call up Reservist X tomorrow, what is your target for how long he has to stay deployed? Is it six months? Or? Uh, the maximum is 270 days. But the usual policy of going six months, is that Well, that would, that would, of course, depend on, on how long the conflict uh, so no kind of gentleman's agreement about how long the bump called up to Not to my long. knowledge at this point, no. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us where these first 2,000 uh, reservists will deploy to in Europe? Will they all go to Italy? Will they go other places? Uh, they, some of them will be going to existing tanker uh, f uh, bases that we have uh, right now to uh, augment those forces, and then there are other bases that the theater is looking at right now uh, that they will be going to, but I don't have the specifics of that at this point. General, yes, I realize you're Air Force, but what are the ceilings for the other services? The total uh, call-up is 33,000, so that's divided between the uh, Army, Navy, Marines, and uh, the Coast Guard, I believe, has had 10. Uh, Marines is about a thousand. Navy is uh, 892, and the rest are Army. Do you yes, know yet where the um, 2100 will come from? They're or in the which? press release uh, that we have back there. They, it lists the uh, tanker uh, units and where they're from. Um, I know you don't have a crystal ball as to how many you'll be called up, but the, the SYNC has asked for. Um, this is the down payment on a, on a force of about 300 aircraft. Uh, given that, how many do you anticipate in the next tranche? Well, it depends on where they're going to be based because this will also uh, uh, bring up the requirement for base operations support personnel. It's just, not just air crews. So depending on where they go, that will drive how many people we need to support the aircraft once they get into the base. And I just don't have that fidelity yet. No, I don't. Sorry. Can you give uh, some general idea of what types of people I mean to be pilots, mechanics, uh, base operations people? What all? Who all would be called? Well, you can imagine the uh, the types of people that will go along with with the tanker aircraft. There will be, as you said, pilots, uh, aircraft mechanics. There may be need for some security, uh, but the base operations support end of this, we really don't have. Uh, a good handle on at this point that's being looked at right now between uh, the, the uh, force providers here in in CONUS and uh, General Clark's forces. Are there going to be like uh, civil affairs people and intelligence and that sort of thing there, or is it going there, to be just related there could to be. I, I'm not going to limit it to anything right now because I don't have the details. Is that who stop loss is going to be uh, uh, put to also? Stop loss will be will be the critical skills we need to maintain the... Uh, it's uh, your airframe and power plant people and, and so on. I would anticipate there would, there would be all of those people. Uh, but as I said, that analysis is ongoing as well, dependent uh, upon the, uh, the increased forces that we're asked to uh, provide. Are any of the other services doing stop loss? Uh, no, no. And when, when does stop loss start? As of today or...? Do we have a date on that, Ron? Uh, I think after we do the analysis. Okay. We'll, we'll answer that further at, uh, at 3.30. We'll get the personnel expert on that one. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, obviously, the United States is not part of the European Union, and the London Daily Telegram uh, reports that we, we are not obligated to comply. The United States companies are not obligated to comply with the oil embargo imposed by the EU. Does that take legislation or is that something that we're going to do by uh, goodwill? How are you going to stop American uh, companies from shipping? It's something we uh, are about to do by regulation and uh, under the uh, Export uh, Control Act and it will happen either today or tomorrow or sometime soon. But you know, I think it's under a Commerce Department program and um, it requires uh, basically an adjustment to a set of regulations which are in the process of being drafted if they're not already signed and implemented. So it does take Congress? Yeah. I, I don't know whether it's an executive order, but it doesn't have to go to Congress. It's something that can be done under, under um, uh, existing legislation. 
Ken, yeah. still on oil. Did, did I understand you say that uh, military supplies of uh, fuel are down to 10 percent of what they were? In, uh, we're getting reports that in some units it's down that low, yeah, in some units. Because Clark said uh, today right. he, that, he, that that reply, there are um, figures that apply to, uh, in general, to military supplies in Yugoslavia. There are also figures that apply to uh, reports we have about uh, individual units. Some individual units have been hit harder than others or than the military as a whole. So the total supply, you would agree with uh, Clark's figure of was down 30 percent? He said about down 30 percent for the military. Military reserves, I think, is what he said. So the difference between reserves and supplies, they're all the yeah, same? I mean, I was just talking about some units. but. Remember, what we're doing is making it more difficult to move fuel from central storage facilities out to units in the field. Yeah. Is that down about or down to 30 percent? Down about 30 percent. About, about 30 percent. Do you have a, any, any better feeling for how long it's going to take to come up with the, uh, the nuts and bolts and rules uh, from the NATO staff on how they're going to implement the, the uh, blockade or the visit and search or whatever we're Well, I mean, I think they hope to do it by this week. My understanding is the EU embargo goes into effect on Friday. Is that correct? Um, so I would expect that they try to synchronize what they're doing with the EU action. Also, the new U.S. Uh, regulations will be, uh, should be in effect this week. I think everything's supposed to come together with the EU embargo. So there'll be a, a unified approach to this problem. And that's, of course, what the heads of state agreed to do at the summit over the weekend. Are there any signs that Milosevic is starting to uh, to crack? I mean, do you read anything, for instance, into these statements by the, uh, the deputy foreign minister or, for, for instance, the, uh, the sudden compliance with the Geneva Convention regarding the POWs? Do you read anything into these, that Milosevic might be feeling the pressure of this campaign? Well, I, I think that he's uh, certainly his country and his economy is beginning to feel the pressure of the campaign quite dramatically. Um, how this affects uh, pr President Milosevic's calculus about uh, what he should do next, I don't know. Uh, it's clear that he, as General Clark said, has miscalculated in a number of ways. And the principal way he's miscalculated on the will of NATO to carry out a, a devastating campaign over a long period of time in order to secure its military goals. Uh, I think that if he doesn't realize uh, what's happening to his country, he's not paying attention to uh, reports he's getting or he's not getting reports about uh, the damage that his country and his military uh, is, is uh, receiving every night and every day now. Yeah, are, there, are there an adequate number of uh, ships in the, in the region to uh, conduct an embargo, or is that going to require more ships? I think there are about 30 ships in the area now. And uh, what's important to realize about a visit and search regime and an embargo is that it doesn't require that every ship be boarded. Um, a lot of these ships are, uh, can report as they leave ports as to what they have. Um, uh, ships are boarded selectively. Uh, ships um, uh, can be examined or their bills of lading can be examined at various stages and then they're tracked. Uh, if a ship says it's not going to Montenegro, there's no reason to board it. Uh, but it can be followed and if it suddenly veers toward Montenegro, then it might have to be visited. But um, I'm one of the uh, parts of what General Clark is doing is deciding the statement of requirements. That is, what, how many ships would he need to enforce this? And uh, a number of, several of the countries in NATO on Friday at the defense minister's meeting said that they would be willing to put up more ships to enforce a visit and search regime. So I think he'll clearly be able to get the ships he needs. Okay. Yes. Uh, tankers are very obvious by their silhouette, obviously. And if tankers are stopped, uh, even they don't carry a tanker such as like a Greek flag or something else. Uh, and it's found that they have, uh, say, diesel oil or oil that can be used militarily, uh, I would assume they'll be turned around or stopped. But what about general, like, heating oil and, and things of that? Will, will all petroleum products be stopped? I can't answer that question. I mean, that's uh, a legal question, and I think that we need to 
uh, look at the terms of the EU embargo, and uh, uh, I mean, I'll can take I, the question. Can I do one more, though, that maybe you can answer? It seems to me there's been a shift in strategy here vis-a-vis -vis the tanks. It's been very difficult to take out the tanks in Kosovo for reasons we're all well aware of. But it now seems, from what we hear from Brussels and what we see, that the air campaign now focuses on hitting a, the, the fuel oil, the diesel for the tanks, and the ammunition depots, so that in a sense they'll become huge monoliths just sitting there. Is that true? Or has that changed at all? Well, Ivan, from the first day of the campaign, we've been hitting at uh, ammo dumps and uh, uh, other supply concentrations, including oil. So uh, this is something we've been doing for, well, it's always been, we've always been attacking from several different directions. We are attacking the the uh, the fuel and supplies needed to s sustain the military force on the one hand, and we're also attacking the forces on the ground. And the principal impediment so far to attacking the forces on the ground has been weather. Uh, when the weather clears up, we can get many more of these forces on the ground. We've also attacked uh, headquarters and depots and, and uh, uh, storage areas as aggressively as possible to get forces that may still be there, but many are dispersed. So we have to go after these forces in relatively small numbers. Has an arrangement been worked out to base NATO planes in Hungary? Yes. In Hungary. Can you give us any details about what kind of planes? Would, would there be support planes there, or would there be strike planes? The Defense Hungary? Minister of Hungary announced today that um, uh, NATO tankers will be stationed at an airport in Budapest. Yes. Secretary Cohen said this morning um, that Clark still needed to send a detail analysis, a detailed analysis of what 300 planes he wanted and how they would be used. I've been under the impression that that the Joint Staff has already been shopping on that, and that any second now they're going to approve these 300 planes. What's going on? I mean, it sounds like is NATO organized? <laughs> I mean, have they, have yeah, they made NATO's organized. This is a complex issue because it does involve uh, working out basing arrangements. I think that you can see from what you've read in the press that uh, Bulgaria has uh, allowed uh, NATO planes to uh, uh, use its airspace. Uh, Hungary has announced that it's allowing uh, NATO tankers to uh, fly out of uh, a former military airport in Budapest, uh, that um, we are working aggressively uh, to find uh, places to base and ways to employ these planes. The 30 tankers that Secretary Cohen deployed yesterday in response to General Clark's request are designed to um, uh, allow the Allied forces to fly 24 hours a day with the current planes they have uh, based in the current locations. Uh, the list of targets will broaden, and the uh, area of approaches into Yugoslavia will also broaden. And as that happens, there will be a need for more planes and even more tankers beyond what we have now so we can continue 24-hour-a-day operations against a broader list of targets um, being attacked from, uh, from different directions. So is that liberalization of the battlefield that has slowed the detailed analysis of what planes are required? Is that true? Well, the main thing is the, uh, we have to work out basing arrangements for the planes, and um, uh, that's been going on. And then uh, the second is there's always refinement up until the last minute of exactly what the, uh, the strike and support packages are. That depends in part on how far away they are uh, uh, from their uh, ultimate strikes, uh, from their ultimate targets. So all that's in the process of being worked out. Are the 30 tankers going that you have now said, are some or all of those going to Hungary? Um, I believe that some are going to Hungary. Are going to existing bases? Uh, they should, they'll probably bed down in existing locations, yeah. And how long will it take to get the fuel stocks in for the tankers? Uh, it's a good question. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I assume we'll be able to do it. I mean, they're flying out of an airport that must be, get fuel. But um, uh, we'll try to get an answer to that question. Bill? Just a, another. Another point uh, on what I asked General Wall: Can uh, are there any other places, any other uh, countries uh, that are supplying the fine products to Serbia at this time? And second part is, if if Bar, uh, if the port of Bar is the primary port of entry, how about when 
the, the petroleum products are offloaded, uh, those road systems, uh, whatever transport, whatever uh, transportation systems would be used to haul the stuff from the railhead. Uh, is that can that be shut down, or has it been shut down, or do you know? Yes, it is being shut down, and it will continue to be shut down. But uh, we're aiming primarily um, at uh, at lines of communications outside of Montenegro. It's where they, where the roads, rail lines, whatever, go from Montenegro into Serbia. That's where we've been attacking, and that's where we'll continue to attack. So it's a two-part program. One is to prevent oil from getting into Montenegro, and two is to prevent oil that's already there from getting out of Montenegro into, Ser into Serbia. There's no other place that, uh, that petroleum refined products are coming in to Serbia. Well, I, I hesitate to say there's no other place, but uh, we've worked aggressively to shut down the supply. Um, I'm, I have been trying for a couple of days to get uh, an oil, uh, a Yugoslav oil expert down here to answer all these questions, and he can give the, you answers in terms of metric tons or, uh, or barrels or uh, gallons or liters and uh, completely befuddle you. As to uh, as to what's happening with the Yugoslav oil supply. I wish you well. Yeah. These tankers that are going into uh, into Hungary could they possibly be the thin edge of the wedge? In other words, after this, you might get strike aircraft there because, of course, the shorter you have to fly, the fewer tankers you're going to need. So would it not make sense if the bases aren't too primitive of going from the tankers to strike aircraft being based? Well, it's an interesting analysis, but I think I'll let the future speak for itself. No plans to do to upgrade for fighter aircraft? We'll just wait and see what happens. Can yes. You, Ken, uh, three, uh, four or five weeks into this campaign, do we have a sense of how many precision guided weapons have been dropped to date, even rough order numbers? We know how many sorties have been flown roughly. Can you get that? Or? I'll, I'll take the question. Yeah, I asked General Wald earlier, but just wondering, do you have any indication of what at this point, the preliminary cause of this Apache helicopter accident. I do not. There's no indication whether it was a malfunction or whether it hit a tree or. No, I don't even really ask these questions because I find that um, uh, you never really know till the investigation's over if then. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs>